So in this video, we're going to talk about the continuity equation. And if you remember from our introduction video, the continuity equation is essentially just a giant sledgehammer. Uh, it's a, a single equation that's a function of time and space that when applied to a semiconductor system, it gives us the information about how the charge carriers are moving and where they're located. And if we want to derive the continuity equation, we need to figure out, okay, well, um, what, what processes change uh, the electron and hole concentration? And we know that, well, there's a couple. There's, uh, you can have a current within the semiconductor, and so that obviously changes the position of charge carriers. And we know that we've got a drift current, which is just due to slow kind of moving in response to an electric field, and diffusion, which is exactly like it sounds, the diffusion of charge carriers. And then we've got recombination and generation. And we know that recombination generation can be thermal, uh, or generation can also be from external sources like light. So if we shine a light on the semiconductor, then it can excite electrons. So these are the two, two processes we're going to be using to derive the continuity equation. And so as you might imagine, the continuity equation is so named because electron hole concentrations must be continuous. Uh, they can't simply jump from one value to another within the same within the same material. So let's say we've got a we've got this piece of semiconductor here. So uh, let's say that this is a p-type semiconductor uh, just so I don't have to worry about the uh, uh, signs of electrons, uh, ele the electron charge being negative. And let's just say it's a cylinder for now. It doesn't have to be a cylinder, but uh, that's that just will make our lives a little easier and it's easy to visualize. Let's say we're interested in the number of holes within a certain slice of the semiconductor. So we know the slice has a certain area. It's just the area of this whole cylinder, and it's got a certain length to it, uh, delta x. And we're going to say that this slice has a total hole concentration p. So that's capital P. That's just the whole, uh, the total number of holes within this region. And I find it easier to work with the total number of holes rather than the concentration. Just in terms of derivations, it makes makes uh, our life easier, in, in my opinion. So we're interested in how this number of holes changes. So we're interested in how it changes with respect to time. Uh, we want to know what affects the concentration as a function of time. So dp dt is equal to what? Well, we know that if we've got a certain generation rate within this region, g, uh, that's going to increase the number of holes because their electrons and holes are being generated. And we know that electrons and holes also recombine. And so that's going to decrease the number of electrons and holes within this region. So we can erase this little question mark. And we say that dp dt is equal to a certain generation rate uh, times the volume uh, delta v. So delta v is just equal to a times delta x, um, because the generation rate is generally given per unit volume. Uh, and so g delta v minus r delta v. And then we've got plus uh, some other stuff as well. So that's, that's fairly straightforward. Well, what's this other stuff over here? Well, in addition to generation recombination, we know that we can have currents within the semiconductor. So we might have a certain hole current, uh, JP, at this point X. And let's say that this point is, is X, and this point is just X plus delta X because it's a distance delta X away. So we need to add uh, the hole, hole current, JP, at point X. And in order to get the number of holes that this is con contributing, we need to multiply the current density, J, by the area. 
And then since this is the total amount of charge added, we just divide by the charge per hole and we get the total number of holes added. And similarly, we also have to worry about the current flowing out of our region through the right. So that's just JP of X plus Delta X. And that's flowing out of our region. So we have to subtract it. So JP of X plus Delta X times the area divided by Q. Okay, and this is actually the complete equation. This is um, from now from now on, everything is just simplification. This is the full continuity equation. So uh, we want to put it in a nicer form, a form that's easier for us to understand and easier to do math on. So we don't want these deltas sitting around here because, well, we, we want to be independent of the region that we're operating on. So we want to change this total number of holes into a hole density. So we know that we want to divide the total number of holes within the volume by the total volume. And so we've got a delta V here, we've got a delta V here, but we don't quite have a delta V here. We need to multiply by delta X. So that's, that's what we're gonna do. Uh, so DP, and that's capital T, DT, uh, just rewriting this, is just the generation minus the recombination plus the whole current flowing in, uh, JP of X times A, and I'm just going to multiply this by delta X over delta X so that we have a delta V here so that we can divide by that. So divide by Q delta X minus JP X plus delta X. Oh, I'm running out of space. Uh, times A delta X over Q delta X. And so I just multiplied both of these by delta X over delta X. Nothing fancy about, nothing, nothing crazy about that. And we're going to divide everything by delta V. So we're going to divide everything by the volume. So A delta X is just equal to the volume. So we have D lowercase p dt. So this is the whole concentration, which is what we want to work with, because that's what all of our equations are in terms of, uh, is just equal to G minus R uh, plus. And I'm going to factor out the Q here. So I'm going to factor out 1 over Q, and then I'm going to put the delta X on the bottom. Uh, JP of X minus JP of X plus delta X over delta X. And so notice that what we have here is nothing but the definition of the derivative. Uh, if we take delta X approaches 0, then we get exactly the equation for the derivative of the whole current. So we're, we're going to do that. Let's just take the limit as delta x approaches 0. And we will get dp dt is equal to g minus r. And then since this is the definition of the derivative, uh, it's actually the definition of the negative derivative because we've got plus delta x over here and we've got a minus sign here. So that should be minus uh, 1 over q times the derivative of jp with respect to x. And we're done. Uh, this is the continuity equation. Now, it's not quite in a usable form just yet, and that's what I'm going to go over in the next video. But conceptually, this is the complete continuity equation. We've got all of the sources of the terms that can change our carrier concentration accounted for. We've got generation, we've got recombination, and we've got both kinds of current. So in the next video, we're going to expand this JP term into the diffusion and the drift currents. And we're going to expand this G minus R term. And we're going to put everything in terms of delta P instead of just P. So P is the total whole concentration. And delta P is the change from equilibrium. And why would we do that? Well, uh, at equilibrium, uh, things aren't terribly interesting, right? Everything is static. There's no movement. There's no net movement. So the continuity equation uh, is just 0 equals 0 at equilibrium, and there's nothing interesting about that at all. 
Uh, additionally, changing everything in terms of delta p will allow us to make certain simplifications. So when delta p, for example, is much less than the equilibrium hole concentration, and when delta p is much greater than the equilibrium hole concentration, this equation will reduce to something that is often uh, solvable when it wouldn't otherwise be. So thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.